Praise the Lord. God bless you, everyone. This is Apostle Ivory Hopkins. I am extremely excited to have you to listen to our podcast messages. We are trusting that the Holy Spirit will bless you. We're going to take you into a message in just a few minutes, amen, where I feel that God is going to give you insight, revelation, and wisdom through the teachings that the Lord has given us to present before you. If you want to get up with us on our website, our website is pilgrimsministry.org. That's pilgrimsministry.org. It is my pleasure and my honor to bring this anointed message to you where I am preaching and teaching under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, giving God's people insight that will strengthen their spiritual walk, build their family, and put under their feet the enemy on every level. Now sit back and enjoy this message. God bless you, my dear friend, and thank you for taking the time to listen to our podcast. This is Apostle Hopkins, amen, and I want to thank you all for tuning in. The title of the message today on the General Deliverance Podcast, and I want to thank you, Facebook Live and YouTube, for coming in. I ask the Father to bless you, amen, and give you wisdom and insight through the teaching that we're about to teach on a biblical look at manifestations of demons. This is a mentoring class. Now, every now and then, someone will inbox me questions. And a young lady inboxed me and asked me a question, praise God. And I'm going to read it. And then we're going to go into breaking it down. Uh, now, a young lady said, was, said, a young lady was calling out spirits in a person. This is her inbox note. She said, a young lady was calling out spirits in a person. Number one, I knew she was getting ready to purge. In other words, she knew that the person that the demons were in were getting ready to purge, which means to throw up uh, froth, froth or demons. As I shared one time before, often in the old school church where they would get at the altar praying, the Holy Ghost saints would get around someone that was bound at the altar and they would be praying for them. And all of a sudden they would start foaming at the mouth and throwing up a froth. And that, and what they really were doing was the power and the anointing of their prayer was making demons come out of that person. Now, this young lady said, I asked for a trash can, but they put down paper towels on the floor. Now, this happens. Now, I know some people think that this is unsavory. This should not be happening. But I will say this to you, people of God. This here absolutely can and does happen. Amen? Can and does happen. Now, here goes what she said. Number three, she said the, she began to cough up mucus blood and these little pebble like things she even says i've seen them once before do you know what they are now it is not unusual when people are going through deliverance that they cough up a phlegm they cough up a mucus and sometimes blood now when you see that coughing up blood a man mixed in the mucus it's not necessarily a sign that the person is damaged on the inside. Often during deliverance, sometimes people do throw up and cough up certain mucus or things like that. And this pebble-like thing is also a manifestation. Now, that pebble-like thing could be associated with any number of things. Now, because I was not there at that deliverance session, I can only give an observation. I'll put it like that. Y'all bear with me because I because I'm kind of excited teaching this to you, class. I can only give an uh, observation from long distance. And I have seen things like this. I have seen slime come out of people's mouth. I have seen uh, even there's been times where you could even see stuff that looks like snakes actually come out of a person during deliverance, especially when you're dealing with witchcraft or voodoo. This is possible. To the workers, I'm going to tell you this. I even had a time in Delaware one time. I was praying for a teenager, and she actually shape-shifted on me. And that means this. While we were commanding this serpent spirit to come out of her, her forehead rounded almost like a cobra. Her, her, her eyes and face looked just like a snake, kind of a bit over in this form like this. And when we commanded the demon to come out of her, when the spirit left her, guess what, soldiers? When the demon left her, her body came back to normal. 
This can happen. So sometimes when you're doing deliverance with people, stuff can come out of their mouth, out of their body, and even shift shape on them. I will share another thing, soldiers. Also, Evelyn and I was praying with an individual that was a breeder. This young lady was a person that had that they had kept secret out of the way. Actually, actually uh, really captured her. And when she came to us for deliverance, because she had gotten them free from this satanic cult, and she had heard of us in Delaware. And when Evelyn and I were praying for her, now this was many years ago, this young lady manifested uh, demons uh, and that were horrific. I mean, uh, I mean, we saw her go through all kinds of changes. But here goes the clincher. At, at towards the end, when we were casting out the last demon out of her, she throwed up a turquoise, a green-looking substance. When that substance came out of her mouth, that substance was so, uh, I mean, it didn't even smell. But some of it hit Evelyn's hand. And it took almost a week for that stain to come off of Evelyn's hand. Now, listen at this, guys. I say to the young lady, what was that green stuff that came out of you? And the young lady said to me, sir, she said, five years ago, when they did this ritual with me, they had me to drink this green substance. It was a part of the ritual. I said, excuse me? I said, wait a minute. You're telling me that something resided somewhere in your body for five years that you had drank? She said, yes, sir. I said, and today, what we saw throw up out of you <laughs> was that substance you drank five years ago. She said, yes, sir. Well, my dear friends, I saw it with my own eyes. Through the Holy Ghost, Evelyn and I was performing the deliverance on her. It blew our mind. But she manifested and throwed up a green substance that she drank five years ago. Now, don't ask me how does this type of thing happen. It blows my mind. I'm not sure to tell you how it happens, but all I can tell you is it absolutely did happen. Now, let me deal with the word manifestation. The word manifestation in Vine's expository dictionary is the word akin, which means to show, to exhibit. It's an uncovering. It's a laying bare. It's a revealing a hidden thing. So when spirits manifest, it they show up. They are uncovered and they are revealed from where they hide. Now, this can happen several ways. Now, in the book of Mark, there was a man who was in the synagogue, and I don't think that that was the first time this man had went to the synagogue. But when Jesus was preaching out of Isaiah 61, the man began to manifest, and the demon strange cried out, Leave us alone! What have I to do with thee, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us before our time? So that man probably sat there many times in the synagogue. Have you ever gone to a service, a church service, and the anointing is high? <coughs> Excuse me. And the preaching is strong. And all of a sudden, someone begins to manifest a demonic stronghold. And the pastor, uh, the preacher, or the prayer team has to take them aside and cast the demon out. This is not unusual at all. The Bible said that Jesus spake with authority. Matter of fact, in that particular chapter, if I remember, they says, never have they seen this before, for he speaks as one that has authority. When you understand the authority that is in you, you will find demons that will openly manifest. Now, that was in a church service. I will share another one with you guys. Evelyn and I was having uh, a lunch in a Quincy's restaurant in one state. We were having lunch at this restaurant. All of a sudden, anointing came on me while I was eating. Evelyn's back. Evelyn was facing me at the table across from each other. All of a sudden, the anointing hit me, and all of us and, and I could I could discern that a spiritual manifestation was in our environment in that restaurant. All of a sudden, this young man walked up behind us, and I told Evelyn, I said, Evelyn, 
I said, don't move, but begin to pray. I said, this young man coming out of here behind you has got a demon in him, and that thing is manifesting towards me. Now, I knew it was not going to hurt her because physically I would have stopped it anyhow. Moving on past that, just getting that thought out your mind, okay? But when that guy got in front of me, he all of a sudden, his eyes bucked. He looked at me, and he made the sign of a cross over and over again. And under my breath, I held my head down and said, I reject, I bind, and I cast down whatever he's trying to send my direction. That was a demonic manifestation. That was not one where they were coming for help, but that was one where it was operating in the individual. I want to say something to many of you. Some of you may be new to the ministry of deliverance. It's not always the case. What I'm sharing with you all is not always the case, but these are the ways demons manifest, and we don't need to be ignorant. Now, here are go some of the beliefs about demonic manifestation. Here goes some of the beliefs. Some of the beliefs about demons' manifestations are different and can cause problems for those who need deliverance. Why? Because the church is confused. Many in the church are confused about demonic manifestations because many don't do it. If you don't do it, no wonder you can't, amen, have an accurate understanding of what to do with it. So hopefully with this, we can help it. But here goes some of the beliefs. One belief is that demons don't exist in people anyway. So all this praying for those with so-called demons is way out in left field. That is completely false. Some people believe that all you have to do is blow or breathe them out. So manifesting out loud, so manifesting out loud or falling on the floor is not necessary. Next, there are those who think that if you don't stream, kick, throw up in a towel, you are not really getting deliverance. Now, let me say this. The statements in, in B and C are partly true, but not necessarily the whole truth. We will go into the word of God to see what the Bible says about how demons lead people who are bound up. Now, have you got that? This is from a biblical thing. This is not Brother Ivory deciding to just say something. Class, my students, I go directly into the word. My style of teaching is to go directly in the word of God, say what it is saying, break it down as much wisdom as God gives me, and leave it right there. Got that? Now, let's look at a translation of this word manifest here, uh, on, and got that manifest defined, is phreneros, means a shining, appearing, publicly. Shining, appearing, and publicly. Now, what Jesus does to demons is make them come out and open to be exposed publicly. Now, look what it says here in Mark 1, 23 and 24. There was in their synagogue, a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. Now, that matches what the Apostle Paul said in the book of Colossians. In the book of Colossians, it says, Colossians 2 and 15 says, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Listen to me. At some point in our lives, church, the anointing is upon you, church. The anointing is upon you, believers, that where demons are hiding, the anointing in you and the preaching in you should make them get uncomfortable, manifest, and even break. Show them up for where they are. Now, I'm speaking today in the reference of the deliverance ministry. Are you hearing me? Now, here goes what I'm not saying. Every time you have a church service, every time you preach a sermon, demons should be manifesting and crying out all over the church. That is not sound doctrine. Neither is that biblically balanced thinking. 
I, I preached hundreds and thousands of sermons and had no demon manifesting. We just preached on a particular message teaching, however that goes. But when it is an anointing for deliverance, say it with me. When there is an anointing for deliverance, the atmosphere will be charged by the power of God to such a degree that demons will manifest and it will come out. In Mark chapter 1, 21 and 23 and 24, that man that was sitting in that synagogue cried out. Jesus was reading Isaiah 61, and that spirit said, let us alone. I would imagine they were shocked. Every now and then, y'all, I get people calling me saying, in our church service, uh, the pastor was preaching, and all of a sudden, a, a demon cried out in the sixth aisle, and the, and the usher, I mean, and the intercessors took the spirit out, took the person out, and cast it out. That is not unusual. Matter of fact, sometimes there are several ways to handle that. One way when a demon cries out like that, you might want to, as the Holy Spirit leads, because some people like to be critical of their church. And I'm not going to sit here and help you criticize your church. Let me tell you something. If God has an anointing on your leader and the leader is preaching and a, a demon cries out and some of the ushers and the intercessors ease that person out to a room and let the pastor continue with the preaching of the message that is completely not out of order, that is completely possible depending on how the Holy Spirit is leading the leader to deal with that thing. Then there are times that the Holy Spirit will cause a leader to directly attack the demon. To directly, right, when that thing cries out, all of a sudden the leader will probably walk from the pulpit and engage that thing point blank as the Holy Spirit is leading the leader. So when you had it, had been in the service and that demon manifested and they just took that person aside. Now, here goes what I'm not going to say God tells him to do. Take them aside, fan them, just fan them. Don't cast nothing out. Don't call nothing out. Rub their back real good. Yeah, you good. That is not deliverance. That is pacifying a spirit. And what you just did was allowed a demon to submerge. It manifested because of the anointing of the praise, the worship, the word. And you got the person aside instead of commanding that spirit to come out, even if you had to take them aside. Even if the pastor felt led to go at it right then and there. But if you just take them aside and fan them real good and don't command them to come out, that spirit will submerge in that person, and that particular demon will hide and reside right in that person, and they will still need deliverance because they never got delivered. What happened was the, anointed, the anointing made them manifest, and y'all messed around and allowed that thing to go back down and submerge. Now, let's look at Matthew chapter 8, verse 28. Uh, are you following me, students? Let's look at Matthew chapter 8, verse 28. And when he was come to the other side in the country of the Gadarenes, there met him two possessed with devils, coming out of the tombs exceedingly fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. Now, I use strong, the strong concordance when I break down these words. And the word that I'm going to first break down is this word here called fierce. They were fierce. This word fierce is chalapos. Ch chalapos. Now, there are times when demons will manifest and they will be chalapos. Now, I may be hacking this up because I'm not a Hebrew or Greek, stu a Greek, a Greek student. But I can break down what Strong's Concordance says the words mean. Now, the word fierce here, chalupos, means to be difficult, dangerous. So spirits will fight fiercely to hold their victim. This is not unusual. So if you have someone and they start manifesting and they start tussling like that and you may have to hold them in order to until they're bound down, until the group gets a control of it, they will act, one, violently hostile or aggressive. They will also, two, put up intense fighting. Three, they may give menacing looks that show in facial expression. 
Now, what we've usually done or people that have been violent. Now, here goes what we've done when we've had violent manifestations. We have uh, men in the church, men in the church, that will hold them uh, as we are praying for them. But as I got older in the Lord and understanding a little bit better, and the things I'm going to share here, I like to be humble when I say this because sometimes we act like we have the answer to all problems, and we don't. But let me say this to you. What I have learned in my older years of doing deliverance, we started, when I first started, we had to fight hard with the demons. Man, the men had to hold it, legs, arms, feet, everything. And, all, and the Holy Spirit told me, command the spirits to be bound from using the muscles of the individual. That's one method I use. And when I started using it, I said, I bind you from fighting. I bind you from using their strength. I bind you from aggressively fighting on that floor and rubbing and banging like you are. And I've seen the, the, the demon lock right down because whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. Now, that was one method. Another time I was uh, praying with an individual and all of a sudden, uh, uh, and an angel landed. I saw the angel. Now, I am a third generational seer in my family. I, I don't have to explain that, but I have that gift of a seer, and I also can discern in the spirit. So this angel lands right beside the person. Four men are holding this person down. All of a sudden, I look, when the angel lands, I say to the people holding them, I said, you can get off of them. And all of a sudden, I, and I said, in the name of Jesus, I said, you can get off of them. That angel took and just pointed, and that person's body stayed locked down on that floor. It was like they could not get up. And look, when the men got up, they were like, Pastor, you, uh, Pastor Ivory, are you sure you want us to take our hands off of this person? And I said, you can do it. And, that, and I literally watched the angel of the Lord, the power of the Holy Ghost, lock them down on that floor, and they couldn't get up. And I said to the demon, can't get up now, can you? And it said, shut up, shut up. It was fighting, and it could not get up, and we commanded it to come out. Now, why God used that method, I don't understand. All I know is that the angels of the Lord encamps about the heirs of salvation to deliver. So, uh, so some of these things I'm telling you is not always the case, but we've had that in our experience. Once again, to any of my critics out there, it's easy for you to criticize, but while you're criticizing, I actually have the real experience. So I'm not held hostage to that. So I'm not trying to get you to believe what I'm saying. I'm trying to teach students who will actually get something done more than talk and actually have some knowledge under their belt. Now let's go to Mark, Matthew's chapter 8, verse 29, class. In Matthew's 8 and 29, and it says, Behold, there cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Thou art come hither to torment us before the time. Now, the Greek word here, cried out, they cried out is krezo. Krezo. Got that? The Greek word from Strong's Concordance is the word krezo, K-R-Z-O. It means to croak or stream. So it is not unusual for a person who has been attacked by demons to croak with a hoarse voice. I've seen that thousands of times. I've seen demons come out streaming with loud voices. We have known people with demons inside them to make harsh sounds in the night. They can hear a voice in them making involuntary cries. This is a sign of a grave need of deliverance. That's right. If you have, are a person that has had demons that attack you at night and you could hear down in your belly somewhere a growling and a grunting, and man, it, you actually need to get some deliverance. Now, in Acts chapter 8, verse 5 through 7, Acts chapter 8, verse 5 through 7, we see this word crazo, crying out here in action. Now, once again, I'm dealing with biblical manifestations of, of, of demons, not your opinion, my opinion, but Greek, Hebrew, breaking down biblical manifestations of demons. Now, Acts 8, 5, then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. 
for unclean spirits crying with loud voices came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsy and that were lame were healed. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it beautiful? How that not only did these spirits cry out, but many of them that had infirmity and sickness in them were healed. So often you will find a coalition of, of, of demons being cast out and healing coming afterwards. Amen. Hallelujah. How many? I am enjoying this. I can't talk to you students like that because I'm taping. Because if you'd have been in the class, I would have said how many of you are enjoying what God has done. By the way, if you are enjoying my teachings, I do ask you, amen, to uh, to uh Friend us, amen, uh, on our Facebook page, amen. We ask you, amen, to subscribe to our YouTube channel, amen. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I do want to thank all of you who send a cash app donation of any size. We usually tell people, so a $5 donation to bless Evelyn and I. And by the way, if you don't feel led or don't want to send anything, just learn to st and to study. But I do ask those who want to bless us for our teaching to sow a $5 cash app donation. And you can do that to dollar sign General Ivory Hopkins. You can do that to dollar sign General Ivory Hopkins. Because what I'm trying to do, people, is not set up my teaching so that people have to pay in order of exclusively in order to get the teaching. I don't want to do that. So we're going to keep doing it the way we're doing it right now. Now, let's get back to the word. Translation, the word definition, crying out, also means B-O-I or hollow. Oh, hello. Got that right there? Now, this here means to shout for help. This means to shout for help in a tumultuous way. Spirits will cry out for help. I've actually heard of demons cry out tumultuously in a confusion, under confusing loud noise and movement. I have seen them in service actually cried one demon one time that we were casting out literally was asking Satan to help them. And they asked him, why aren't you helping me? Are you demons? Other demons were cast out. Why are y'all leaving me? Help. I've seen demons cry out. I've seen them boa. I've seen them H-L-L-O-O. Hello. I'm pronouncing it, hacking it up in Greek, but I've seen this happen. If you are in a service and a demon manifests in a person, they may seem to cause confusion with loud noises as the spirit is brought to the surface by the power of the Holy Ghost. And do always know, don't get all jacked up and shocked at the manifestations. If you want to get all delighted and happy, be happy that the power of God stopped that thing from hiding. Number two, they can become violent agitation by stirring and shaking back and forth in, in, in other manifestations. Now, I'm going to say something about this shaking back and forth. We had an experience in one of our deliverance sessions wherein the demon in the person knew that we were getting ready to cast it out. That thing got mad and it started grinding the arm of the person and we stopped it. We had one time where the demon knew that it, knew that it was getting ready to be cast out and it started hitting the arm and we stopped that. So listen, so be very mindful that of, of how you hold. Never, now, by the way, when you're holding a person down, because sometimes you may. Oh, by the way, I want to say this legally. Legally, when you're praying with a person, you have to be gentle with them. You have to be careful. Also, you have to have permission from them, even or their family, if they're there, to minister to them. Got that? Now, what we don't do is make a person go through deliverance when they don't want it. Matter of fact, I ask everybody, please do not sign up for a deliverance session with me and with a person that doesn't want to be delivered. I don't like what I call uh, 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 blind shots of deliverance. I often get people, and me and Evelyn have to sadly tell them, does that person that you're trying to sign up for know or want delivering. Well, I just thought if I could get them before you, you could break that yoke off of them. Because I know they're bad. I go like, wait a minute. We don't do that. We don't force people to get free. We don't lock people in rooms and not let them come out to get them free. We don't hold them down aggressively and, and uh, against their will. That's illegal, folks. And it also looks ignorant. Okay? 
But I will say to this, if you're ever going to sign up for a session, a deliverance or counseling session with me in matters of deliverance, and it's for someone else, make sure that that person is saved and willingly wants deliverance. Because when you force a person to try to get something they don't want, it is a waste of time. With a person like that, you intercede for the Holy Spirit to bring them to the place of wanting their freedom, to bring them to the place of wanting their salvation. We have no right whatsoever to force a person to have deliverance. I even am careful with that when it comes to a child. Are you hearing me? When I pray with children, and I've had children deliverance before, I, but I make sure that the way the parents and the way that I handle them is gentle, is calm, and not ignorant. Okay, let me go on now. Mark chapter 9, verse 17 and 18. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wherever he take of him, he tear of him, and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to the disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. Now, the point I want to make to you right here, look at this here. I want you to see this section right here. Because every now and then I will get a, God bless them, a pastor that talks about it doesn't take all of that. I'm glad. I, I understand, bro. I understand, sis. You would think it doesn't take all of that. Be, uh, listen. Listen to what it says. Wherever it taketh him, number one, it says it teareth him. I'm going to explain that. Number two, and he foameth. Now, you can't get away that Jesus, the Lord, dealt with people that foamed at the mouth and gnashed with their teeth and pined it away. Are you hearing me? Well, I just don't say these people, are, well, that stuff is phony because people were foaming at the mouth. Jesus, Jesus, Mark 9, 18, Jesus dealt with people in this verse. He says, and whatsoever he take of him, he teareth him and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pined it away. Now, uh, I'm going to move right on. Now, this word here, Tear is the word sparazo. The word tear in the original Greek and Hebrew is the word sparazo. That means to mangle or convulse as if, I'm, boy, let me get this down here. Thank you, Lord. Stay with me, stay with me, class. Stay with me, class. Oh, God, I thank you. I love teaching. I love teaching. I love teaching so people are not, not uh, ignorant of knowing what, what's really happening. This word sparazo, tear, means to mangle or convulse as if in a seizure. Did you see that? That's what this word tear means in the Greek and Hebrew. It means to mangle or convulse as if in a seizure. So sometimes a demonic manifestation will look like a seizure. Now listen, I worked for nine years as an attendant that worked along with nurses. I've seen hundreds of seizures. And I've also have, man, have dealt with people that have had demonic manifestations that look like a grand mal or pet mal seizure. And but yet when I begin to command the demon to come out, the activity stops and the foam comes out of them or the breath of air comes out of them and the person comes back to their normal self. Now that was different than what I did on MC4, MC4 and when I worked for the state of Delaware. That was a lot different than when I did as an attendant working with nurses and, and taking care of the patients. Also, this word means to affect as by repeated blows so severely as to disfigure or damage. So sometimes these, these spirits, be, they begin to tear. That word tear doesn't mean rip. It means sparazzle. It means to convulse as if a seizure. It means repeated blows or to disfigure or damage. So are you getting this class? Once again, I appreciate you. Amen. Now, I know this is going to be a, a little long, but this is a class. This is what I am doing. I'm doing this to teach people. That's what God has told me to do, and then I go home. Listen, many times spirit will try to disfigure or hurt their victim and pull on areas in their body causing pain. Now, I, I will tell you this. I have had times where I would be doing deliverance with someone, and the demon inside of them would 
in inside pull on a muscle in them. I had a a young boy that we were praying with, and the spirit of anger manifested in him. And when we went to cast the demon out and got the young man to agree for his freedom, that demon began to pull on his leg and cause pain in it. We bound that spirit from that area. When this happens, you take authority and tell them, I bind you and I command you to loose that area in Jesus' name. And be, be stern, be aggressive, and be bold, and be filled with faith when you do it. And remember, our God is there. If that spirit is manifesting, it is not doing it because it wants to. It's doing it because it has to. Good God and must say, are y'all hearing me? When you see the power of God, expose the enemy, don't get scared. Say, look at God, because if God brings it up, He's doing it to bring it out. And I want you to take stubborn faith and authority, soldier, against the works of the enemy. Now, so uh, so what you should do is ask the Father to heal all torn areas and protect the victim from demonic ter demonically tearing them. What you should do is ask the Father to heal all torn areas and protect the victim from the demons tearing them. Now, in Mark 9 and 18, it says, Wheresoever he goeth, once again, he teareth him, and he foameth at the mouth. Now, I'm going to go next to that word. Hallelujah. I'm going to go next to the word foameth. Amen. And this word foameth, and now watch me hack this word up. That word foam, let me get this here. Are you following me, students? Oh, y'all are such a wonderful class. I appreciate you. Amen. And if this is being used in RDU, Rapid Deliverance University, amen, that I was East Coast Chancellor for, where the founder is uh, Apostle Dr. Jackie Green, if this is used in the class, I want to tell y'all how much I appreciate you, Rafa. Apostle Jackie Green, I appreciate you, woman of God. Amen. We're still in there with you, girlfriend. And you know I like to add classes to the classes for uh, Rafa Deliverance University. Amen. Out of Phoenix, Arizona. Now, getting back to here, let's get back in focus class. Now, now we're going to deal with the word how he turf and, and he foameth. We're going to deal with the word foaming at the mouth. And he foameth. Now, this word foam is appraisal. Appraisal. It means to froth at the mouth. A form of saliva issuing from the mouth. Now, like I said, it don't take all of that. That's what some preachers are saying. Because you don't know what you're talking about. That's what some critics are saying. Because you have no reference. Because you're not doing deliverance. And you're not dealing with it. So rather than say something that you have no clue, study and get a clue. This here is biblical. Listen, sparazzo, the word foma, sparazzo, coming from Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. Now, it means to froth at the mouth, a form of saliva issuing from the mouth. Some people who are going through the deliverance will throw up a froth-like substance, which is not a demon. Come on, let me highlight this. Which is not a demon. The froth is not the demon, but it is a type of uncleanness that demons are associated with. Got that? Just like you can cast out some demons that have a sulfur-like smell associated with them. The sulfur-like smell is not the demon. It is the uncleanness associated with them. Now, we are not saying that everyone throws up during deliverance. Did anybody hear that? Did anybody hear me? We are not saying that everyone throws up during deliverance. But for those who do, Paper towels are used to catch the froth that comes out of their mouth or your floor or your area is going to be nasty. That's the common sense. Oh, here they go with the buckets. Here they go with the paper towels. Listen, not everybody manifests that way. But in case they do, many people that have some knowledge is prepared. And once again, this is not always the case. Moving on to the next session. The next word we say we will deal with, and it gnashes with the teeth. Thank you, Lord. God, I love doing this. This is so much fun. I love but this. God, I love this season of my life. Whoa, 
This is so much fun. Wherever he take of him, he tear of him, he foam of it above, and gnash of with the teeth. Now, this word here, uh, gnashing at the teeth, is an aggressive. It's a grinding at, with teeth. We have seen this happen more than one time where a person will grind their teeth while they are manifesting. We have seen this more than one time. So, And when that happens, you want to bind that. You want to get the person to fight against that because demons will do that with the teeth. This, you, and you've seen it, that they gnash up at the teeth. Matter of fact, the demons and the people that went against Philip, they literally jumped on him and gnawed on him. That's in the book of Acts, I think, chapter 7, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, so these te- this thing, they will gnash with their teeth, growl, bite at, and that type of thing. Now, the next part that I'm going to deal with, it says, and he pineth away. Hallelujah. I don't know about y'all. I am having so much fun doing this teaching. Ooh, this is so, so wonderful. Oh, God, I thank you for what you called me to do. This word that we're going to deal with now, and he pineth away. Now, what does that word pineth away mean? Now, this word pine, oh, boy, exergerano. Exer, exergerino. I'm packing it up because I don't speak the language, but it means to desiccate, to shrivel, to drain or be drained of emotional or intellectual vitality and intellectual vitality. So there are times when these spirits will drain you. That we're pining away. So sometimes you can go through a deliverance and at the end of it, you are exhausted. Now let me tell y'all something. Yesterday I did 10 deliverance sessions, and they were all close to 45 minutes as the anointing moved. And let me tell you something. At the end of that, I was t- I was tired, (laughs) but I saw one after another doing those counseling and deliverance sessions. The people go through deliverance, the demons come out of them, and many of them were exhausted. And I told them, you're going to be exhausted, so right now take the time to rest. Amen? Now, some of the counseling that I do is counseling over areas like marriage and family and jobs and the gifts of the Spirit. That, that's what we do. We counsel like that. Amen. By the way, amen, that's uh, another thing that we do, and that is a part of the business work that we do, and it's not a church service. I happen to be a counselor that is schooled and text in deliverance. And God did that, and God's the one that called me to do it. Now, I'm going to move on past that, amen. Those who are under demonic attacks may begin to lose weight quickly without any medical reason. I'm talking about pining away. Sometimes one of the signs of a demonic stronghold is that you have the person that is demonically being harassed and tormented, they will start to pine away. They will start to lose weight, vitality, lose strength. Honey, if that's happening to you, you need to sit down and get some deliverance by a strong believer, by your pastor, by the leader, by the prayer team in your church. You ain't got to come to me. I'm not talking to everybody about coming to me. I'm good. But I'm trying to tell you that if this is happening to you, where a demonic curse have come against you, a demonic stronghold is tormenting you, some of the signs, and this is not always the case, that the body will look like it is pining away. Those under demonic attacks may begin to lose weight quickly without any medical reason. I have seen people curse by family line curses of witchcraft, voodoo, or emotional attacks, Lose weight because of demonic attack. Now, I did say this because I like balance. I like balance. Matter of fact, all of my students know Brother Ivory always teaches not always the case. So all weight loss is not due to a demonic attack. Hello. Hello. We're not going to set up here and teach some unbalanced, crazy mess that makes no sense. Now, moving right along. I am having fun. Woo, this is so much fun. Mark chapter 9, verse 20. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him straightway, the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming. Now, here we go, messing with another word. The word wallow. See that right there? Boom. Let's even give it a little bit of color. I like my yellow. There we go. Amen. So this word wallow here 
is uh, <laughs> Kaluyo. Uh, look at me hack that up, y'all. <laughs> this is so much fun. But it means to roll about over and over, to writhe like a snake. And I've seen these manifestations hundreds of times where the demon and the person writhe just like a snake. On the floor, they begin to wallow. When they brought this boy to Jesus, let me go down here. Thank you, Lord. God, this is a fun, 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 fun teaching. I am loving this. How about you? Guys, I hope you're getting something out of this. Amen. Hallelujah. When they brought the boy to Jesus, the demon in him threw him to the ground, writhing, wallowing, and foaming at the mouth. But, of course, like you said, it doesn't take all that. Like you said, that they're, they're just putting up showmanship. Jesus had this manifestation, and you nor I can challenge it. Boom. Are you hearing me? I'm going to say it again. Jesus, biblically, had these manifestations, and none of us, no matter what seminar you've gone to, no matter what Bible college you've gone to, no matter what you think you know, you cannot fight that I'm breaking this down in Hebrew and Greek and proving what the Word said, not an idea. Matter of fact, I will say this, and I'm going to go to Mark 5. I'm going to say this to you. The more solid you are in your biblical understanding of deliverance and of the word of God and how it works, the greater your power will be to break these demons. Are you following me? I found down through the years. One of the things the Lord told me, he said, Ivory, when I started learning about deliverance, he told me, Ivory, I want you to restudy everything you think you know. And God blew me away. I said, what? He said, restudy everything you think you know. Now, God was make, bringing me to a rude awakening, soldier. And when I did, I started going solidly in scripture, 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 scripture. And guess what? That is one of the reasons why the grace, the anointing has been so strong because of the word. And I'm going to leave it at that because of the word. Now, let's go to Mark 5. Two through four. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because of often, because he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broke in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. So spirits will manifest in some people with supernatural strength. So the workers should ask the father to weaken them and command the spirits to loose the body of their victim and come out. And this is important. Ask the father to weaken the demonic stronghold. Ask them to weaken that manifestation. Mark 5, and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tomb crying and cutting himself with stones. God, my heart goes out to him. Jesus, and I have seen demons do this. I've seen them cause people to bang and hurt themselves and, and, and cut themselves and, and mangle themselves. I've seen this type of thing. And we've seen the power of God. We've seen the power of our Savior break these demonic strongholds. And he cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high? I adjure Then listen what these demons said. They called him Jesus, son of the most high. He said, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. My dear friends, listen, 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 listen. The reason why demons don't want us to understand deliverance nor do it is because it torments them. The reason why demons don't want you to have deliverance in your church, because it knows it will bring them out of hiding. The reason why demons want you afraid to come against them, because they know that the Bible says these signs follow them that believe in my name. They cast out devils. God has given the church power. Verse 5 and 8 and 9. And he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered, my name is Legion, for we are many. Got that? My name is Legion. Talking to demons is another area that should be done only by the leading of the Holy Spirit. 
I'm going to say this right now. I do not have a battle or a criticism of other deliverance ministers who are talking to demons. God may have led them in that service, in that session to do it that way. So I'm not going to fight. I'm not going to fight my ally. Got that? I'm not going to fight my ally. I'm not going to be like the disciples, see one casting out demons. Then I'm going to jump on here on YouTube or Facebook Live and throw shade at somebody who God is dealing with them at that time a different way. But for me, I have talked to demons before. I have seen them, amen, in a person talking. I go after them to get them out as quick as I can. And if the Holy Spirit asks me, or tells me to say something to the demon, or ask the question, I will do it. But my main goal, my main goal, my main goal is to cast that thing out. Talking to demons is another area that should be done only by the Holy Spirit's leading. Also, those who do it as a habit will be deceived by a lying spirit. But demons will tell the truth when under pressure of the Spirit of God. Demons will tell the truth. Got that? Did you see what I said right there? Did you hear what Brother Ivory said right there? Demons will tell the truth when under the pressure by God to do so. Got that? But did you hear what I say up here that you got to be careful of? Demons can and will lie. I had an experience in my church in my early years. In the early years of my, my ministry, I had an incident where a demon lied to a during a, some people were casting out demons during a crowd practice. Now, first of all, they should have never been doing it. None of us elders and leaders were there, and they were young and didn't know what they were doing. And the demons turned around and said, out of a person's mouth, I'll say the Jones family is against the 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 Williams family. And honey, it caused a lot of confusion. And it hurt these people because now they're sitting in church and the demon said that the Williams family has put witchcraft against the Jones family. And, of course, Brother Ivory, you love everybody, so you don't see it. And it caused confusion. Finally, the lie was exposed, and we got that confusion out of our church. But how did it get in there? They listened to a demon talk and took the demon at its word. This actually happened in my early years of our ministry. Now, as I'm getting ready to come to a close, I will say this, demons will get delivered without any outward manifestation. I'm going to say it again. There are demons that will come out and the person get delivered without any outward manifestation but change. Now, I'm going to take time and say this again. If the teachings that I'm doing, that I'm putting up, is a blessing to you, we ask you, amen, to support, to bless Evelyn and I with a cash app donation. That is dollar sign General Ivory Hopkins. That is dollar sign General Ivory Hopkins. We ask you to subscribe to our YouTube channels. Now, we come on Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. every morning with teachings. Matter of fact, this is going up again on Facebook Live at 6 a.m. this morning. I'm doing this now. It's about 4.20 in the morning. I've been up since around 2.30. Amen. But I wanted to get this teaching out. Amen. So if we are blessing you, amen, we ask you to cash app a donation of any size. It can be small. It helps Evelyn and I. Listen, folks, my desire is not to charge or put a price on this teaching so people that have no money can't pay to come on the classes. That is my desire. So if you can bless us, we thank you. That's General, dollar sign, General Ivory Hopkins. That is our cash app. Or you can go to pilgrimsministry.org. We will show you that as we're closing out anyway. This is the last of it. Demons will come out without any outward manifestation. The women was in the Greek of, uh, now in Mark 7, 26, through 30. The woman was a Greek, a Phoenician by nation, and she brought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. And Jesus said unto her, let the child, let the children first be filled, for it is not meat to take the children's bread to cast it into the dogs. And the woman answered and said unto him, yes, Lord, but yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's bread. And he said unto her, for this saying, 
to thy way. Go thou saying to thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. Now, first of all, two things. The mother came without the daughter. That's called proxy prayer. She made a proxy request. The demon was home in the daughter. And he pleads with Jesus because deliverance is the children's bread, the seed of Abraham, the born again, the blood washed. That is our bread. And But she asked because Syrophoenicians were considered unclean and unholy to the Jews. But Jesus had great mercy. And when she was come home to her house, she found the devil gone. And the daughter laid in the bed. Ha <laughs> ha. I love it. Many people. I'm getting ready to close out on this, guys. My God, I've had fun. Oh, I love what I'm doing. Wow, I love it. Many people will get delivered and show no outward sign of manifestation of any kind other than change. What are we looking for in people's freedom anyway? We are looking for change. Got that? We're not looking for manifestations. We're not looking for streaming and howling. We're looking for change. The Seraphonesian's daughter, woman's daughter, changed, but there was no streaming, kicking, crying out, fighting, just change. We have seen people who come become disappointed because they don't seem to manifest so out, some outward sign. Uh, kicking, streaming, or some other extreme manifestation like the ones next to them are going through. So here goes what I'm talking about. I've had people in a deliverance service, a deliverance class, amen, they will have, uh, go, someone will be getting deliverance, and they will wonder how come they're not streaming and how to like that person. People manifest differently. That's just the way it is. My suggestion to you is to be open and let God deliver you the way he does, and don't limit God. Right, got that? Don't limit God. Whatever way the Lord deems to set you free, don't limit God. My dear friends, amen, I'm going to get ready to get up out of here. Amen. This is Apostle Ivory Hopkins, and you're listening to the General of Deliverance podcast. And this has been a mentoring class on a biblical look at manifestations of demons. Amen. Now, if you want to bless us, uh, Evelyn and I, for what we do, there is our cash app right there. It's dollar sign General Ivory Hopkins. Any amount will be a blessing. And there may be some of you that said, well, I don't believe in blessing people for teaching. Okay, that's fine. Don't do it. Just enjoy the message. And there are some of you, amen, you're thankful for us taking the time to minister the word. And you like to honor the servant of the Lord. And Evelyn and I appreciate it. And there's no size of cash that is too small. We appreciate anything you can give. Amen. Also, uh, you can go to our website at pilgrimsministry.org. That's pilgrimsministry.org. Or type Ivory Hopkins, and, uh, and I'll come up everywhere in Google, and you can go there. Well, guys, I will God bless you. I want to thank you all for being with me. It's been a blessing. God bless you. And as I said earlier, I want to make sure you all know this, too. Every weekday at 6 a.m. in the morning, Monday through Friday, that's 6 a.m. every Monday through Friday, we put up teachings. We put up uh, videos. Sometimes we do lives so that you can learn and be taught. Well, God bless you, soldiers. And this is the General of Deliverance, Apostle Ivory Hopkins, signing out, soldiers. And remember, God is watching. Well, praise God. I trust that you enjoyed that message. Well, look, my dear friend, this is Apostle Hopkins. Amen. And I'm getting ready to get on up out of here. Look, if you want to sow a donation and bless us, you can do it on our website at pilgrimsministry.org. That's pilgrimsministry.org. Or you can go to our cash app and make a cash app donation to General Ivory Hopkins. It's just simply General Ivory Hopkins. It has been my pleasure, amen, to bring to you the things pertaining to kingdom, life, and family. So I trust these podcasts blesses you, and I'm going to catch you guys in another teaching. God bless. Bye-bye.